You can't just change one thing, you have to change everything. That's the principle behind what you're going to have to do to truly immerse yourself in the PS5 and Xbox Series X's futures. To make you truly believe you're a cyberpunk on the run, we're going to give you the rundown of Sony's new pair of game-ready TVs, a peek at some other brands, and even tease you with Samsung's $60,000 Dream Gaming Machine Conductor. Which console needs what? With what we've seen in gaming previews so far, it seems that PS5 game developers are harnessing its console's power better. However, in theory, both machines are relatively equal in specs and are not fully playing to the top of their graphics intelligence yet. With both systems boasting of ray tracing, GPUs of 10 to 12 teraflops, and ultra-fast solid-state drive loading capabilities, all our current recommendations bear equal weight for both systems, as we estimate they will both need equal support on three levels. I don't know anything about that. The Big Three. The holy trinity of features to look for in a major league gaming TV are connectivity, frame rate, and resolution. For connectivity, we're going to want an HDMI 2.1 capable boob tube. We can slam up to 48 gigabytes per second of information through that bad boy so our greedy eyes can feast on uncompressed 8K video at 60 Hz or 4K at 120 Hz. For frame rate, we're seeking 4K at 60 frames per second and up, which is an impersonation of how an athlete sees in steady competition mode. Most current games are only 30 frames per second capable, which is about how we usually perceive the world in our calm, everyday state. Gran Turismo 7 developer Kazunori Yamauchi says next-gen gaming could put out games at 240 frames per second, closer to how an elite athlete sees the game in critical moments or how you and I would see our environment in a life and death situation, so you can see the appeal. For resolution, 7680 by 4320 pixels, or 8K Ultra HD for short, should do the trick. For now, current tech caps 8K gameplay at 60 frames per second though. In the future, we might be able to have our cake and eat it too on that front. This is why it may be better to hold your horses on buying a new television for now until the future catches up and can offer us more frames per second at higher resolutions. Maybe that's what the developers of the new God of War are waiting for. No. What's available now? If you wanted a gaming TV right now, you could buy the LG C9 OLED, which has HDMI 2.1, can handle 120 frames per second, and has only 4K capability, is not a bad choice. A 77-incher will set you back about 4,000 US dollars. The Samsung Q800T QLED TV has all of the above with an 8K option at 6,000 US dollars for its 75-inch model. For those of you who pledge allegiance to Sony for all electronics, we have Sony's newly launched PS5-ready duo of TVs consisting of the 4K Bravia X900H Android TV at 2500 and the Z8H 8K LED Smart TV at 7000 both priced for their 75-inch versions, of course. Let's do the math. If we add in a $50 HDMI 2.1 cable, plus the estimated $550 for a PS5 or Series X, add in a $60 game and another $50 controller so you can play with a friend, that's $710. Breeze. Plus the cost of your favorite 75-inch TV. And you're looking at a $3,210 to $7,710 investment, plus tax. <laughs> okay, you don't have to save all those coins you were going to toss to your Witcher to have a true next-gen experience. You can use an old HDMI cable on a reasonably sized TV from a decade ago, play an updated last-gen game by yourself, and it will work out just fine. You just won't be maxing the machine out. However, if you're living more like the millionaires and billionaires you've been putting in the dirt as Agent 47, Get the Samsung 98-inch LED Q900 Series Smart 8K UHD TV with HDR. For a whopping 60 large, see if it's 33 million pixels and AI upscaling will enable you to see your house from the sky in Microsoft's Flight Simulator 2020. Maybe you could even see yourself in your living room watching this video. That'd be cool. What are your thoughts on next-gen gaming? Would you spend over 60000 on a TV? Any expenses we left out? Let us know in the comments down below, and like and subscribe for more from The Gamer. Until we meet again.